So I'm going to fire questions one of you at a time. Who wants to start by explaining what is the D20 Cafe, the million dollar question? Uh, I'll do it, yeah. So D20 Cafe is like a regular cafe. You come in for food and drink. Uh, we have like a menu with, well, usually have quite an extensive menu with like different types of beers and milkshakes and whatever. But we're quite unique in that we also have a board game library. Um, so you pay a cover charge and then you're free to use any games that we have on our library. Um, we're there to recommend games, teach games. Um, we also have games that you can buy if like, you like the games on the shelves, then we have them in our shop sort of thing. So I love that. Do you know of any other board game cafes in the UK? Because when I heard it, I was like, this is amazing. We have this in Watford and it's yeah, just on our there's, doorstep. There's, there's plenty around at the moment. Um, they were quite not scarce, but there weren't as many when we first started. So we're almost four years old now um, mm -hmm. at the end of this month. Um, when we first started, there was, I think, like, double, at least doubled now since <laughs> we yeah. opened. And who can tell me the history? Where, where did this D20 board game cafe idea, because for many of us, we think of cafe, we think of just your standard high street cafe. We don't think of board game cafe. So where did the idea come from in the first place? We, we are all really like big, avid gamers. Uh, we were all friends that used to play lots of board games anyway. And we actually used to go to board game cafes. But the nearest ones weren't like for a good hour away. So we just thought, well, we could be the ones to do the one that's in this in our area. And I'm going to come to Paige now. I want you to sell D20 Cafe in a minute. I'm going to sort of time you loosely. Go for it. OK, well, in normal times, uh, the best thing about our cafe is the events. Uh, we run on things like open gaming as our kind of prime. We used to have events every day, but open gaming is the one, I think, because it's... Um, it's for everyone who can come with friends or on your own and meet up with other people um, and just like you just get slotted into a game. The community is really, really nice. Um, so that was kind of like the, the top selling point for me at the CAF. Um, but alongside that is we've got 900 plus board games, um, incredible milkshakes, in my opinion. Uh, we now, um, our baking game has gotten up like over lockdown. So our, our homemade cakes are incredible too. Um, and yeah, and the staff, I think, are all quite knowledgeable. So if you come in and you really want to play Pandemic um, or something like that, instead of having to sit, read through all the rules, we can teach them to you when you come in. Wait, Pandemic is a game. This is showing off. <laughs> yeah. It's obviously well during the Pandemic, funnily enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Wow, I've, I've learned something new there already. And what events have you been holding? Have you been on Zoom like we are now doing events in the last year? Has it been a bit different in that sense? Yeah, we've done quite a few events. Uh, we did a lot up to begin with, but I think people are getting a bit tired of Zoom a little bit. Um, but we do try and, you know, do events for our communities. We've got lots of like video games. We've kind of delved into video games now as well a little yeah. bit just to keep our communities together. Something to do. And where do you get your supply of board games from? Mish, how does that happen? We yeah, have uh, a few wholesalers that like you, they're quite big. Asmodee are like the big one, everyone knows them. So, like, they, they usually stock most games that we're after. We just make an order and get it in. And I'm going to ask you, Paige, how has the last year been? It's been a topsy turvy one, but what's it been like at the D20 Cafe? Um, it's definitely been a lot of, a lot of adapting. Um, sort of started out the beginning of this year was like January, February before the end times um, <laughs> was incredible. It was gonna, it was set to be one of our best years. Um, and then obviously everything happened. Um, so it's been a lot of adapting. I think we've become um, like we, we immediately managed to, we've been talking about getting board games online for a, a while, but that obviously happened a lot sooner and had a lot more time to do it. So we, we put all our board games online. Um, Mish came up with the idea of these uh, num boxes that we do. Uh, so that's like um, like four homemade treats we deliver to people's houses each week. Um, we did try takeaway, we did try retail, um, depending on whether it was the rule of six or the what tier we were in. Um, so it's been a journey. Some of it, obviously, we were just closed. Um, the first lockdown, we just kind of closed because we didn't really know what we were doing. Um, but yeah, it's just been a lot of adapting essentially and and seeking advice as well and um, kind of talking to Wencha a little bit and what do we do now what do you advise what can we do what grants are available 
I mean, we'll get to Wendra in a second. I just spotted a cat behind you there, Paige. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. anyone else spot that? I was like, oh, this is the. I can't control them, unfortunately. It's 2020 all back again. I'm like, hang on a minute. There's a cat in the Zoom call. It's fascinating. <laughs> um, you, mentioned, you mentioned Winter just that mission. I'm going to come to you for this one. What help did you get from Winter? How does just explain Winter to someone who may not have heard them before? Let's start with that. Um, so they were amazing at the beginning, especially uh, when we first got started. Um, so we wrote a business plan, we weren't, and then we weren't really sure where to go from there. So um, I think it was Paige that found uh, found out about Winter, um, and we just um, messaged them, and we booked in some one to one consultations with the business advisor, and that was honestly like really really helpful for us, just to have the validation from like a professional business advisor who could look over our plan. Um, spot any like holes that may have been missing um, and tell us where, where to go next and just have someone validate that our business idea was a good idea an idea that could actually could actually work and we must just explain as well both of you are in the same shot and they live in the same household it, it, I watch tv nowadays and anyone who's within a meter I'm like hang on a minute why are you two close together so we'll just explain <laughs> that you are watching us in the world of zoom right now and vibe socials and things uh, Marriott, I want to come to you why would you advise someone get in touch with Wenta if their business was perhaps struggling more than usual in the last year with everything that's been happening? They just have so much knowledge about all things business. They, they can really help you pinpoint where you need to go in, in a particular direction and what you should be doing, like taking the correct steps to make sure that you're like, doing the right things, basically. Mm. It must be such a difficult year. And let's let's end this part one talking about T20 Cafe. I wanted to ask you, Paige, let's, let's think positive. What are you looking forward to as a business as the D20 Cafe in 2021? What are the hopes? Um, I think my biggest hope is that events can come back. That's my um, my big kind of goal. Um, even when we had like rule of six, we know everything's not going to just shoot back to normal. But bringing back some events, even if it's social distancing, where we can have something in the store where people can play together again. Because um, that's our... I think it's always been our main focus is about our community. We miss our customers. Um, we miss teaching games. I miss sort of seeing people meet for the first time and then becoming friends and then playing every week. You know, they're the things that I love the most. So obviously I love everything back to normal, but that's the kind of the key thing I'm looking forward to in 2021. Um, Mish, Mary, anything to add to that? Hopes for 2021? To open. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, to reiterate what Paige said, like we, it's been so long since we've seen so many regulars, you know, like people that we used to see week in, week out, and then all of a sudden, they don't see them, they might not have like the best internet access or whatever, and we just don't know how they've got on, you know, in the last 10 months. It'd be nice to just see some familiar faces again and be able to talk about things, but yeah, it's just tough, you know. We are here with Paige Mish Mario from the D20 Cafe in Watford, a board game cafe. Isn't that just so special? Thank you for all being on by 1076. Have you all watched The Queen's Gambit on Netflix, the mini series Phenomena? Yes, we have, of yeah. Course we have. Yeah. <laughs> has, has there been big talk of it in the board game community? This is so exciting. I feel like it's a, a world of magicians that I'm entering myself into. <laughs> I think it's fair to say most board game enthusiasts have probably watched it by now and um, really really enjoyed it i think we smashed it out in like two sittings we definitely yeah it didn't take us long to <laughs> yeah. we have recommended it to a lot of people as well and they've all every, everyone i know who's watched it has loved it basically so yeah. even if you, do not, you, even if you don't really like this you'll enjoy it what do you think the appeal is of it why do people love it just very well written i think it's very clever like it, it does a good job of not making you feel like you don't know what they're talking about like because they, they 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 show you the moves and they talk about them really well so yeah i think it's just a very well made track. i'm happy to say i played um chess last night <laughs> that, mate i won i would have hated if yesterday i played and lost and then came to chat to the board game community and was like oh, i lost just <laughs> <laughs> chess is seen as quite a difficult board game would that be a correct assumption uh probably the tactics mm. like and then the knowing my moves to make, yeah, the strategy. I think the, the, the actual play is not like anyone can move a piece around the board, it's just moving it correctly around the board is, is where the difficulty is. I, I think it's a different day for me, <laughs> but yeah. And why do we think, do you reckon that like the Queen's Gamut has forced people to take up chess? Has it would it drive people to take play a little bit more chess? I think so. I've heard, uh, it's well, it's hard to know the, the sales of chess boards 
at the moment because of obviously like it's it's a bad <laughs> time to engage in a thing. But I, I know in the like with other board game cafes, a lot of people said that they had a like a, a lot of demand for for chess boards essentially, and people were asking where can I get really nice chess boards sort of thing. So it's all influenced by the Queen's Gambit. And I'm going to come to you, Paige. Chess, it, we discussed it. It's difficult for me. It seems a difficult game. Are there more difficult board games that you have at the D20 Cafe that are harder than chess to play? Yeah, because, I mean, chess is difficult in the sense of obviously, thinking ahead and planning what the other person is going to do, um, which obviously happens a lot, a lot of the board games. Um, in terms of difficulty, I would say that we, we have some games that I know people have played, they've come all day, they've played for the eight hours and they've asked us to leave the game out overnight to play the next day because it's just, there's so much to it um, that they need them, you know, to come back. Um, there's a game that we have uh, called Diplomacy, which I know takes like a month to play on and off. Like there are, <laughs> there are some really intense games. We have nice games, but we do also have those games and they're quite intense. What is the easiest game, Mario? If, Ch- if Diplomacy, which is a very difficult thing as we've seen in the last year, um, to not talk too much about news. That's a very difficult thing. Mario, what's the easiest board game? I would say our easiest game is something like, it's called Double. Um, it's basically Snap, but each card has eight different symbols on it and they only match with one symbol per card. So it's a really, it's like insane Snap basically, but it's really good fun. And there's a few ways of different playing it, uh, playing it, so yeah. That does seem a difficult game. And I'm going to ask you, Mish, lots of people have probably spent their Christmas period like we are now on Zoom. What board games do you reckon are good to play over Zoom or what games would you recommend people play? Uh, so there's a game uh, by Big Potato called Herd Mentality, which is really easy o- over Zoom. So the premise is that you there's a question or a prompt and everyone has to try and write down one answer. But your, the idea is that you're trying to match um, every, as the majority you're trying to be in the herd um, so if you're if you pick an answer that's at two out there then you're gonna gonna not not receive the points so that's a good one the crypto as well I, I've played with my we've played with my uh, family and that's a, that's a good one over zoom as well I invented a game of what's in the stocking which I think is a genius Christmas game which we'll talk about later <laughs> and Mario this is the million dollar question in my eyes what defines something as a board game as opposed to another type of game? Uh, I mean, it's it's hard to categorize because so many people associate things that don't have a board as a board game. So for instance, as Michelle just mentioned, the crypto doesn't necessarily have a board, it's just a bunch of cards um, that you use and whatever. But um, I think anything that you play on a tabletop um, is essentially a board game and people can use that interpretation however they want. Things like Magic the Gathering would be a board game even though it doesn't have a board. Um, or anything from Pandemic that we mentioned earlier. So, yeah, I think anything that you play on a tabletop is it can be a board game. I mean, that seems the perfect yeah. answer right there. You're just <laughs> down to a T. And out of us four here, who's a, a good winner and who's a sore loser? Let's, let's discuss that bit, please. I'm definitely the worst loser. <laughs> <laughs> What's he like you to? I think everyone would, who knows me doesn't. I don't like losing. Someone to tell me why. Just I'll let someone else do it. <laughs> He's a very emotional man. <laughs> I had to yeah. check the rule book to make sure that there's definitely not a way you can win. <laughs> do you have made all the rule books on hand? Because I imagine sometimes even at Christmas in a normal Christmas, people are like, hang on a minute, this monopoly isn't being played right and they draw the rule book out. Does that happen a lot? Well, it is our job to make sure we know the rules so that when we teach it to people, we make sure we teach them the correct rules. So there is a lot of going through rule books just to make sure we didn't miss something or get something slightly wrong so that when we teach it. Am I right then, assuming, Mario, that when someone comes for a job, you quiz them on like, (laughs) like, when was Monopoly invented? And if they get it wrong, (laughs) that's it, they're out. (laughs) And we spoke just then about sore losers. What's your advice to someone to not be a sore loser and just to see it as playing the game is the important bit? Let's start with you, Paige. I want an answer from all of you, though. <laughs> uh, I would just say that I hate to be cliche, but it's you're supposed to have fun. Board games are fun. You know, um, I always 
going my first uh, board game that I learned with the intention of not winning because I'll try and win. I always try and win. I think we should try, but I always assume I'm going to lose the first one anyway. So, <laughs> but then you learn, you get better, and the next time you will win. <laughs> so, yeah, there's always the next game. Uh, just always realise that you can play the game again and <laughs> try and win again next time. So, yeah, just don't let that one time affect your life. <laughs> Last but not least. Oh, I was just saying... Um, if, that, if, you, if you want to play with them again oh yeah if you want to play with the same group again then you you know you should behave yourself <laughs> last but not least as we chat about d20 cafe in watford and we talk about the help from winter and things can i ask you favorite board game and why um mario first um i always say Catan, uh, settlers of Catan. it was the kind of the game that got me into board gaming basically i've been playing it for 15 odd years and I've, or I can always find time to play it it's not like the best game or like everyone's favorite but I just it kind of influenced everything for me so uh, yeah Catan for me we'll come to you next page uh, mine was and I always say again is Battlestar Galactica the board game um it's quite a heavy game it's quite an intense game lots of lying lots of deceit lots of betrayal so I'm into <laughs> that <laughs> Good, good stuff. And again, last but not least, favourite board game and why? Uh, culture, I think. It's the strategic game of winemaking. Um, a lot of strategy to it. You've got to make sure that you have the correct grapes. You've got to have the correct, <laughs> yeah, put them in the correct place and grow them at the right time and get, the, get your orders in. Um, and it can ramp up really quickly. So before you know it, you're all competing to, to finish the game. Um, but it's a, it is quite strategic and Every time you play it, I try like a, a different strategy. And just to finish off, we've talked about the D20 Cafe, everything to do with board games, which I love. So thank you both. For, thank you all for that. Um, last thing, you've had some help from Wenta going forward and, and fingers crossed things will pick up the D20 Cafe in the next year. What advice would you have for other businesses in South West Hertfordshire near us going forward in the next year? I'm going to start with you, Paige, on this one. Just get a word from all of you. Sure. Um... I do think that I, we can't oversell winter enough, to be honest. Um, the advice from winter, it kind of, even if like I had a problem with a bin company recently and I went to them to get advice on how to, to kind of rectify it. It's like every little, even if they point me somewhere else, um, it's always my go-to. Um, so don't be shy of it. I would definitely always seek the advice, even if it's something silly that you think isn't, you know, or if it's something massive like starting a new business, I would always start there. It's so nice to have that on our doorstep. Mish, coming to you next mm -hmm. on that advice for businesses nearby. Um, I would just echo what Paige said. Um, also contact Wenta. Um, I've often used their live web chat. You can always just ask them a question. So it's good to have that you know, professional advice back up there. To know that you have someone that you can bounce your ideas off. And last but not least on this one, Mario, advice for local businesses. Yeah, I think, I mean, everything's been said. Mm -hmm. Just went to have been useful. Like every little thing that you think, if, even if you don't know where to turn next, always contact Wenta because they will have a really good solution or at least some advice that will really help you out. Even if you don't think they might know, it's always good to talk to someone. Even if you have no one else to talk to, they're always there. So... It's so nice to have that support for local business. Winter at winter.co.uk. And last thing, who can just tell us where we can find everything we need to know about D20 Cafe online? Who wants to take that one? Um, so if you want to find anything about us, we're on all the usual socials. So Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, at D20 Cafe Watford on those or D20 Board Game Cafe on Facebook. Um, we also have our website where we... Uh, which is www.d20cafe.co.uk, um, where you can find information about our cafe, our online shop, uh, our online custom cakes and stuff like that. Everything is on our website too. I'm sure they will go to your socials and they'll find links to that and stuff, won't they? That'll be publicised. Mish, Mario, Paige, thank you so much for this.